Chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting, or CINV, is very important for every oncologist to know how to manage. So we have excellent clinical guidelines to help us to uh, find the right antimedic regimen, but guidelines consistent antimedic treatment is quite low. So this video provides an overview of the pathophysiology of CNB and a guide to the right antimedic uh, regimens. Why and how does CNB occur? So the pathophysiology behind CNB is very complex. So this will be this will be a very simplified overview. So when we infuse chemotherapy into the bloodstream, we'll have a generation of free radicals, and this leads to the release of serotonin or 5-hydroxytryptamine from the interchromaffin cells in the intestine. From here, we will have an interaction with the 5-HT3 receptors on the vagal afferent terminals, and in turn, we'll have a reflex to the dorsal vagal complex in the dorsal part of the brainstem. From here, we will have a projection through the vagal efferent fibers to the effector zone of the emetic stimulus, which is located more ventral in the brainstem. And this in turn will give the physio physiologic changes as we know as nausea and vomiting. In the brainstem, we find receptors for the neurotransmitters responsible for the emetic response, which gives the CINB. So we have mentioned the 5-HT3, but we do also have the neurokinin-1 receptors and the dopamine D2 receptors with the natural ligands, substance P and dopamine uh, respectively. So these receptors and neurotransmitters gives the foundation of the treatment options that we have as the uh, antimedics actually block these receptors. So in addition to these very well-defined blocking agents, we do have a group, uh, the corticosteroids, which is a very important uh, part of the antimedic regimens. Different chemotherapies have different potentials for an emetic response. So we divided them into four emetic risk levels, the high, moderate, low, and minimal. So high emetic risks, that means that more than 90% of patients will vomit if no antimetic uh, prophylaxis is provided. And an example here could be cisplatin. Moderately emetogenic chemotherapy means that 30 to 90% of patients will vomit. And uh, an example here could be um, oxaliplatin. Low emetogenic risk, means that 10 to 30% of patients will vomit. And an example here could be gemcitabine. And minimal emetic risk means that less than 10% of patients will vomit if no antimetic prophylaxis is provided. And here, an example could be venoral bin. You can find a list of all the antineoplastic drugs uh, provided in the guidelines paper. And here you can see them divided into the different risk levels. The cornerstones of the treatment consists of 553 receptor antagonists, corticosteroids, NK1 receptor antagonists, and dopamine D2 receptor antagonists. And all these antimetic drugs have been extensively investigated in numerous clinical trials. And as a rule of thumb, the 553 receptor antagonist gift a, gives a protection of about 50% in patients um, relieved from vomiting. And if we add on corticosteroid, the efficacy increases to 60%. And if we further add on an NK1 receptor antagonist, and this depends on the chemotherapy regimen applied, then the efficacy is increased to about 70 to 80%. To understand the rationale behind CINV management, we need to address the different phases in CINV. So we have the acute phase, which is the first 24 hours after chemotherapy, and we have the delayed phase, the next 25 to 100, 120 uh, hours. And this uh, division is very useful as the neurotransmitters has 
different influence in the acute and the delayed phase, and the anti maggot drugs will then be used accordingly. For the prevention of acute CNV, we have a triplet combination of a 5 h 3 receptor antagonist, corticosteroid, a NK1 receptor antagonist, both for patients receiving high metagenic chemotherapy, and cyclin and cyclophosphamide and carboplatin. In cases where nausea is of special concern for the high metagenic risk groups, we can add on olanzapine. Patients receiving moderately metagenic chemotherapy should receive a doublet of a 5 h 3 receptor antagonist and a corticosteroid, and patients in the lower metagenic risk group only a single agent with either a 5 h 3 or corticosteroid or dopamine D2 receptor antagonist. For the minimal emetic risk group, there's no routine prophylaxis. So now we have covered the acute phase, the first 24 hours, and now let's have a look at the delayed phase. So patients receiving high metagenic chemotherapy, they should receive dexamethasone for three to four days. And depending on the NK1 receptor antagonist used for the acute phase, there are different options. Olanzapine can be used as an add-on if nausea is of special concern. And this goes also for patients receiving anthracycline and cyclophosphamide. Patients receiving carboplatin, those patients should not have routinely uh, prophylaxis in the delayed phase. Patients receiving oxaliplatin, anthracycline or cyclophosphamide, those patients, you could consider dexamethasone as prophylaxis in the delayed phase. For all the other moderately low and minimal emetogenic chemotherapies, no routine prophylaxis is recommended. Safety is an important issue to address because many drugs used in oncology are dependent on CYP3A4 metabolism. And we know that emetic drugs uh, have sometimes a potential of interactions here. Aprepitant and nitripitant are inhibitors of uh, CYP3A4. And this means that when co-administering with corticosteroids, we will have an increased exposure to the corticosteroids. So um, for practical purpose, this means that we will need to reduce the dose of corticosteroids by 50% when co-administering with a prepotent or nitupitant. So apart from the metabolic, metabolic interactions, caution should be taken when combining 5-53 receptor antagonists with drugs known to have a potential for QT, QTC prolongation as uh, this can cause cardiac events. But in generally, we will say that the antimedic treatments are well tolerated. In conclusion, we have revisited the neurotransmitters, the receptors, and the receptor antagonists. We know that we have got very efficacious treatments. The proper antimedic prophylactic regimen depends on the level of immunogenicity of the chemotherapy. And the evidence-based antimedic prophylaxis should be part of any prescribed antineoplastic treatment for the safe of our patients. Mm -hmm.